You're listening to a very special episode of The Big Bark, the podcast that brings you the latest news from the canine world. I'm your host, Dara Burke, and each episode I meet with professionals from across the canine industry, from pet shop owners to groomers, behaviour specialists and vets. Along the way, we catch up with dog owners to find out more about those special bonds that make a dog man's best friend. I'm joined in our Back and Mad studio each episode by my amazing dogs, Bruno and Millie, who really do show that dogs can make your lives whole. We're bringing you a really special episode today under lockdown due to COVID-19, where we chat to you about the latest restrictions in place and how they affect you as a dog owner and how they affect your dog. We talk about the latest advice offered by the World Health Organization and the Irish government. And we're going to give you some tips of how you can entertain your pooch during a time when their routine has been totally upset. And we'll tell you how your dog can be beneficial to your mental health also. Joining me a bit later on is our special guest Dr. Tim Corby from Pepon.ie who will be here to offer the latest veterinary advice for pet owners. So come on now guys and let's get the show started. Well, this is certainly a, a first uh, doing a podcast for me uh, under lockdown. Uh, as I said at the start, I'm Dara Burke. I'm your host. I bring you the Big Bark regularly enough, uh, not as regularly as I like lately, but I suppose in these challenging times, it's, um, <laughs> it's difficult really to kind of get into a regular pattern again. Um, myself, I've been working from home for the last nearly three weeks I suppose at this stage now with my with my day job and it's starting to feel a bit um I suppose a bit isolating at times. Well look, that being said, we have a pretty packed show today. Um of course let me introduce my canine and co hosts who are gonna be no good right now at the moment because Millie is sound asleep right here and I have if I can get the camera to turn without knocking everything, I Bruno sound asleep down there. And you know what? They haven't even had their walk today yet, so I don't know why they're so tired. It's uh, it, it, it's quite um, unusual that uh, this tired so so early. Anyway, uh, enough waffling there. Okay, so today I want to talk to you. Obviously, everyone knows by now about coronavirus, COVID nineteen. It's um, it's a scary time. It's an, I it's a word now. At this stage, I hate using, but it's an unprecedented time. We've never in our lifetime seen anything like this before, and it's I suppose changed how we all live. It's literally changed absolutely everything for so many people. What I'm going to go through a bit in today's uh, show is I'm going to talk a bit about how dogs have a positive impact on your mental health and how that can be great to actually help you get through this and hopefully that they'll bring you some comfort uh, particularly for some of our seniors who are listening in and who may as a result of the uh, lockdown uh, last week announced by on Taoiseach uh, Leo Varkar that a lot of our older age people are now cocooning. And for those people, a dog or cat or whatever kind of pet they have is wonderful for their mental health at this time. It's so great to actually have that companionship because the loneliness that not just us, I suppose, our senior citizens are feeling, but as a whole, the loneliness that everybody is feeling from this lockdown, it's um, it's it's definitely it, it, it's new. It's um, and I suppose for me, I'm sorry. Now I'm don't mean to be distracted here. I just would like to get this actually shared out on as many platforms as I can. But it's a bit. Oh, bear with me. I'm sorry now. I thought I was more prepared for this. Um, 
Okay, so look, let's get back to it anyway. Uh, for now, what I want to talk about first is obviously starting off with the mental health side of things. So, for a lot of us, our dogs, and as the phrase goes, our dogs are our best friend. Uh, for me, definitely the case of the last dog I had, which was uh, Coco, who, if any of my friends who are listening in here would remember, Coco and myself were, I suppose, absolutely inseparable. It was, it was like we were, she was like my little mini me. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I guess like for me, I've had dogs for a lot of my life. And it was just this bond that I, that I feel with my dogs. And I suppose many others out there. There's many other people out there who would actually agree with this too. Um, now, dogs, it has been proven that pet owners are less likely to suffer from depression than those without pets. These, uh, this has been proven by many a study. It can help to reduce your blood pressure in stressful situations. Playing with a dog or playing with a cat, for example, can elevate levels of serotonin and dopamine, which calm and relax you. And these are all coming from various scientific studies down through the years. Pet owners are actually likely to have lower cholesterol. And I suppose this is because you get out, you get active with your pet, so... In a case where you have a dog, you get to go off walking your dog, and many people like will walk the dog because obviously it's it's great for the dog to get out too. Uh, so, in general, people who have pets can experience fantastic health benefits. And here's an interesting fact: pet owners over the age of sixty-five make 30% fewer visits to their doctors than those without pets. So, it's a little quote that I love here. They motivate us to play, be affectionate, seek adventure, and be loyal. This is what dogs do for us. I think dogs overall, they make us a better person. And, well, that's just, well, obviously, that's what we need in this day and age. We need... To be better people. We need to step up to the mark. And we need to start. Caring about others. And I suppose start actually. Start caring about humanity. Because for a long time before this crisis. I think people took things for granted. And. Let me just see. Okay I don't know what happened. I'm not really sure. My mic disappeared for a moment there. Um. But, yeah, so, it's, like I said, this is all new, this, this live part of it. But, what I want to do is I want to bring in uh, Dr. Tim Kirby from Pepon.ie. Tim is going to talk for roughly 15 minutes about the advice that he gives as a vet. He will touch on mental health. He will touch on... Like how good it is to have a dog at this time. And after that then we're going to come back. And we're going to talk a bit about the latest advice. How to actually stay active with your dog. Given the 2K Meredith. And we're going to touch on a few fun things to do with your dog. In the lockdown stages as well. So let me on that note. Bring in the audio clip from Tim here. Tim actually joined me last night. And... Uh, over 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 call and we'll just well look we'll see what Tim has to say on pepon.ie Tim has been on with us a number of times before and Tim it's great to have you on again I wish it was um in better times to be honest absolutely Derry delighted to be on again and to all your listeners certainly strange times not just for humans Derry but for pets as well so I'm sure we'll, we'll go through some of those topics tonight. Absolutely. And how have you, how have you all been doing? Um, you're, you're still operating. Uh, what kind of restrictions are there for you at the moment? Or? 
Well, for general veterinary practice, we have a lot of restrictions in Dara at the moment. So we're working from guidelines that the government are issuing periodically as well. So the general take home message for the public regarding veterinary practice is to only come for real emergencies. So most routine work has been cancelled, like uh, standard vaccinations, neutering, routine dental treatments. All that has been put on hold for the moment. So the specific treatments are all emergency related. So for the actual pet bond side of things, we've never seen such a huge demand for pets, which put me thinking as well, you know, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is it somewhere in between? And I suppose the way I look at it really is we got to make sure that it's not just another Christmas boom for pets, where if we get the coronavirus issue resolved, that people decide then, well, you know, it's just like Christmas, we're back to work. So what are we going to do with this pet? So we just have to look out for those pitfalls and make sure that any pets we do find homes for are there for the long term, really. And I think once we do that, we've pretty much given a good service. Absolutely. And I think on the other side of that, too, what you're seeing a lot, not just in Ireland, but around the world, you're seeing a lot of pets actually being abandoned because people who are worried they might get the virus or people, especially from the early days when they started in China, people have been worried their pets could actually transmit the virus. You're absolutely right, Derek. And we have seen a huge number of pets surrendered in, in different countries. And we're actually having some reports of it here in Ireland as well. So we're not immune to hysteria and false information that's coming across, particularly social media is one of the main perpetrators um, of the false news. And I think it's very important for all your listeners tonight, Derek, that we're just very, very clear on this. Okay, there is no risk of pets to humans. That's going directly from the World Health Organization scientific guidelines as of today and always through this coronavirus um, episode. So that has never been an issue, but just to reiterate that. Now, the whole concern for pets came from the initial case in China. It was actually in Hong Kong, I should say, where there was a 17-year-old Pomeranian who developed an illness. Now, the standard approach in Hong Kong at the time was that any person that had coronavirus the, we call it the Department of Agriculture is essentially what it was in Hong Kong, took all the pets into quarantine from those people. So you have pets of all different ages, sizes, breeds, quarantine in one facility, which in itself is bad enough and stressful for any pet. So this one individual Pomeranian with serious underlying health conditions was put into that quarantine and stressed out. And obviously that put a lot of stress on the poor little dog and its, its organs and its various systems as well. But they sampled it six times and five times it came back as being clear. And then on the sixth time, there was a very, very, very trace amount of genetic material that resembled a coronavirus particle. So it was no way implicated in the death of that Pomeranian as well. So the, the World Health Organization, again, is saying there's no risk of transmission of coronavirus from humans to pets. So I'd like to emphasize that as well. And if something changes, Dar, we will, of course, bring it to our website. We'll discuss it with yourself as well and all the reputable podcasts out there just to reinforce that message. So we will keep people up to date should anything different emerge. Absolutely, Tim. And that's, that's great to hear. And for any of our listeners, uh, that website is pepon.ie. Is that correct, Tim? That's correct, Barry. We're there um, 24-7. We're also on social media. So any queries, just give us a shout and one of the team will get back to you straight away. Absolutely. And Tim, I think as well for a lot of people who are currently in, I know the teacher said last week he doesn't want to actually call us a lockdown, but effectively it's it's what it is. And I know you discussed last night on your, on your live stream that... Like obviously keep it in the two kilometer radius, but for a lot of people that that might that might mean I suppose even for our dogs restricting the length of time they can actually walk their dogs, and it means that like for dogs uh, the, the physical exercise they're getting is a lot less than what they would normally be used to. Yeah, yeah, that's that that's true, Dara, and I think in particular for people that are actually confirmed themselves with coronavirus. So they're in this dilemma, you know, what do I do with my dog? 
So the government's telling me not to go outside, but my dog is telling me that it wants to go outside. And normally I would go outside together with my dog. So that's a very unusual scenario. It's a very unique situation for somebody to be in, but there are people in it and they are pet owners as well. So the advice I would give to anyone, um, a healthy person, shall we say at the moment, to, that wants to bring their pet out, do bring your pet out for its normal walks. That's very, very important for, for your pet and also for yourself as well, both physically and mentally. But if you are going out with your pet, restrict the amount of time it is off lead. Because if you let it off leash and it runs around and you have to go back and, and retrieve it and it's near somebody else that's carrying coronavirus, that's a risk to you. It's not going to be a risk to your pet per se. So for your own health, it's a good idea. And then the second scenario is for somebody that actually has coronavirus themselves. What I would say is if you are in self-isolation as a result of being confirmed with coronavirus, the best thing you could do is to actually walk your pet around your house, around if you have a garden, if you have a close facility where you can do it, brilliant. Okay. What I wouldn't advise doing is encouraging people to get uh, strangers to come in and to take the dog out for walks because you're increasing the risk of exposure to that person as well. So it's a very, very fine balance. There are different ways that you could kind of work around it so you minimize the spread. If you've got somebody else in the household that could do it, walk the dog that traditionally mightn't do it, that's even less risk to the public again because they're in your close proximity and you're lessening the risk of spread to the community. Because what we all have to do is we have to minimise the risk of spread in the wider community and that's first and foremost. Absolutely. And here at the Big Bark, we would also encourage everyone, as would you attempt to follow the, uh, you know, what has been, I suppose, rephrased as physical distancing guidelines, because previously it's been called social distancing, and now it's it, you, you need to keep that two metres apart. And I've been walking, like, I'm lucky enough to live out the countryside. I, ha I live on a white road, but I can walk the dogs up and down the road, and it's roughly about one half kilometers down to the end of my road so it's it's lucky that they can get out for that as well a lot of hills they don't really like that but it's um it, it's still good for them but i mean i mean a lot more my neighbors now than i previously would have seen around but again it's still it's important to remember like the the two meter rule as well absolutely we would absolutely Darry. we would advocate that as well and again it's more for the human safety because as we've said there isn't any risk to the pet's health and the pet won't pose any risk to you. So that's why you do maintain that distance is very, very important. Absolutely, Tim. And Tim, would, what other advice would you give? I, I Obviously, like in this time, like dogs, you are on our mental health uh, week special there a number of months back, back in October, and you spoke about the importance of how, like how a dog is so important for your mental health. And, especially in this time in like it's really difficult time for people a lot of particularly older people who have like pets who are completely alone in this and who over 70s for example who have been told to effectively cocoon themselves and come don't go outside at all like pets will have a huge uh impact on their on their mental health at this time like it'll definitely help them having a having a dog or a cat or any animal around them Absolutely, Dara. And, you know, we're at Pet Bond, we're quite active with some organizations, particularly in the US, where we help them measure actual scientific data that quantifies and shows the positive benefits of, of pets. So it's not this kind of arbitrary quantum theory, does it exist, does it not exist? It's actually hard science that we can measure. And what we do know is basic, simple little techniques such as stroking a cat or showing affection to a dog, or receiving affection such as little licks from a dog back, that what that does in our brain is that it actually releases very, very positive chemicals such as dopamine, oxytocin, and they're the really, really good hormones that flush out the bad cortisol and the bad adrenaline and all the stress hormones. It gets rid of those from our body. And what it does, it reduces our blood pressure, it reduces our heart rate, and it just makes us happier people. And as you rightly say, for a lot of people that are self-isolating, a lot of elderly people as well, that just that physical interaction, the bonding they're having with their pets at the moment 
is giving them that relief that they need both physically and particularly mentally as well and what I would say is we're receiving a lot of queries from people um, regarding how to entertain their pets because some of them are spending a bit more time and the pets aren't actually used to that as well because they have a set routine where they might go to work or one person has a work and the other person is around whereas now the pet is here with two people in the house or more and they're deciding okay well what do I do you know at this hour of the day so their routine is upset so simple little techniques interactive techniques with your pet such as little interactive toys like play some tug of war use some mats and hide some food in it just get a Kong fill it up with some treats you know hide the food around the house make the dog work a little bit harder as well they're all good techniques that will get you moving about they get your pet entertained as well and they mentally engage your pet, which is, is important as well to realise at this time. Absolutely, Tim. And Tim, I think, uh, have you any other advice? What would be your one most important piece of advice for people during this time with our pets? I'd say at this point in time is to try and stick to a routine for your pet as best you can. So you might be at home more than you were, but don't try and disrupt the pet's routine. Because there are creatures of habit, just like humans. When we have a set routine, it has a lot of positive and beneficial effects for us. So try and stick to your pet's routine as best you can. That would be the, the main take-home message. And the other take-home message is for anyone that's considering getting a pet, either for the first time or getting another pet, just have another step back and say, what am I going to do if things normalize in three months with this coronavirus? Will I still be able to look after that pet? Okay, and Tim, that was absolutely fantastic information once again from you. And hopefully, I, I, like I wish you and all the team at Pet Bond and at your practice the very best. And okay. let's hope that we all get through this. And hopefully, people stick to the social distancing guidelines are there. We are seeing that the, I suppose, the worst case scenario that we that was previously thought of 15,000 cases they're now looking at revising that they're saying that it doesn't look like it'll be as bad so it definitely looks like these guidelines that have been imposed are working I'm definitely seeing it like when I go to collect my dog from, from work there's nobody on the roads yeah. and it's like it's definitely like even PM50 the other morning I saw an image on RT the M50 at Russia was completely empty so I suppose it, it, it shows that it's working and it shows that people are actually listening I hope so, Darry. Like a lot of people as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of people looking to get pets, but with people, they're saying, okay, for rescue, you know, staffing is a big issue at the moment. So we got the huge demand. Um, you're trying to go through it to see the ones that are genuine and that, that will keep it. But then, you know, trying to arrange visits and greetings and, you know, home checks. And you got breeders then that want to get certificates for pedigree dogs. They can't get those. They can't go to see the pets. I mean, it's a, it's just all up in the air at the moment, the whole thing. Um, so just, you know, you got litters of puppies that probably should be leaving their mothers and they're not doing it at the right time. And you're thinking, you know, what are the implications of those things? So we're trying to, we've a lot coming in from the public on those that, that we're trying to manage as, as best we can. But sure, look, you know, in the grand scheme, we just have to keep going and um, just hopefully the thing sorts itself out as, as, as soon as possible, really, you know. Yeah, and hopefully it will, Tim. And listen, Tim, thanks once again for joining me. Tim Harvey from PetPond.ie, a pleasure as always. And we hope to have you on again later in the year when hopefully all this is over and done with. And Tim, uh, just up in your team, stay safe. Thanks, sir. Take care. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye. So once uh, once again, as always, that was great information from Tim. Uh, Tim, if you're listening, which I, I, I do hope you are, uh, thanks once again for joining me. And thanks for taking the time to take my call last night. I know that in this time, especially for vet practices and for pet barn, it's a very busy time. And it's very, I suppose, for not just pet barn, but for all pet business for all businesses out there it's a very very stressful time too uh luckily i suppose for pet owners pet shops are considered an essential service and i do see many of the 
of the uh, big bigger stores like Maxi Zoo, for example, uh, Pet Stop, and Pet Stop Discount Warehouse and Ennis are all still open. These are ones I would frequent myself, and I would actually like to applaud the staff in these pet shops and in like all the other stores that are still open and of course all the frontline workers who are still there i think they deserve our applause and i our recognition for everything that they're doing for people um this is i suppose again using that word unprecedented but it's also now the new normal is what it seems to be now i'm gonna move on and as Tim said, uh, like we talked about mental health earlier on, and now I'd like to, I suppose, talk about uh, some of the, well, obviously the latest restrictions that are there. So the restrictions which were announced last Saturday night, which actually came as a surprise to most people, mean now that For recreational and leisure purposes, you are not allowed to leave more than two kilometers from your home. So you have, there is a two kilometer radius that you're allowed to go out for a walk or in dog owners cases, take the, take your dogs for a walk. Now, for a lot of dogs, a lot of small dogs, two kilometers is grand. It will be two kilometers down the road and maybe two kilometers back. So... It's important to still get your dogs out for for the walks as much as you can. Um, for me, as I said to him, I'm lucky to live in the country. I'm lucky to live on a on a quiet road. I'm not going to give out my address, but I'm lucky to live on a very quiet country road, and I can walk the dogs down the road. Now they're not overly happy about their towns because two kilometers on our road involves a number of hills and. Well, for poor Millie, Millie doesn't really like her hills. And <laughs> to be honest, I don't think Bruno does either. But it's it's good that we can still get out. For people living in city areas or even suburbs where there's a park, if it's within two kilometres of your house, assuming that you do have not tested positive for COVID-19, by all means, do go within that two kilometres. Do take your dog out for a walk you're like your dogs still need a routine as tim said there that routine would involve like going for their regular walks you that that can't be stopped like they still need dogs still need our walks because as i was saying about how dogs release dopamine how dogs help our stress levels and how they help with anxiety like you look at it this way dogs have been used not just as I suppose guide dogs in the last few years but as assistance dogs and therapy dogs and that's because of the positive effect that they have on our mental health and we also have a very positive effect on their mental health okay if if we're stressed they pick up on it but you still need to like give them their exercise you still need to play with them if it, you have a backyard take them out the back throw a tennis ball, throw a football around for them for 20 minutes, half an hour. It will do them the world of good. Millie, uh, for example, when she sees a ball, and I don't think Millie's going to be seeing too many balls right now because she is absolutely wrecked. Bruno, on the other hand, has woken up to kind of... uh, Okay, let's not show you that. Bruno, you can't be licking yourself while we're on live stream. No. Ah... but they love playing with tennis balls. They love playing with footballs. Bruno, not so much with football. He loves the tennis balls. He loves to actually chew a ball to freaking shreds. It's what he does with it. But regardless, he just, they love the running around. Like he loves chasing me around the lawn and trying to trip me up. And there's actually a very funny video on my Facebook page, if any of you are friends with me on Facebook, that um, uh, somewhere along the way, or on my Instagram or something, of him literally just knocking me to the ground, blowing the universe to Limerick. But all these things, dogs, they, they need these things. They need their exercise. They need 
that interaction. So be sure to give them that. Now, if you have tested positive for COVID-19, first of all, may I wish you well and speedy recovery. Second of all, it is important that you do adhere to the HRC and government guidelines and avoid contact with other people. Still, if your dog needs to go outside, be sure to let them outside. Um, there's been a lot of, I suppose, I, I won't call it debate, but there's been a lot of people who have recently dropped their dogs off to shelters. Now, shelters like, for example, in the Limerick Animal Welfare are already full to capacity. Putting this extra bars on them when their fundraising is gone is just... Yeah, I, I, part of me can understand why people are doing it because they're worried that no one's going to be able to look after the dog. But if you have any bit of a back garden at all, if your dog needs to do his business, let him do his business out the back. If you only have mild symptoms, then allow the dog to run up and down the hall, run up and down the house, chase them around the house. If you are, I suppose, more severe symptoms, which some people have got, then try to find a friend or neighbour without interacting with them who can actually look after your dog. So just obviously don't interact with them if you have tested positive, but try to find a way that your dog actually can be looked after by someone close, someone that they trust. Because again, if you give up your dog to a shelter during this time, that is the worst thing for a dog's mental health and the worst thing for, I suppose, their, their well-being, if you ask me. Um, like, dogs, obviously, they, they have feelings and emotions as much as we do. So it's important that we remember that and that we look after... Not just each other, but we look after our pets the same way that we have previously as well. Before this crisis started. Because look, this crisis will end. And if we all adhere to those social distancing guidelines, this will end quicker. Now, God, I was hoping that would be a bit more positive, but it kind of wasn't. Uh, somehow didn't stay positive. But, okay. So, let's go on to a positive thing. And uh, let's look at fun things that you can do with your pet. Now, I just want to see. So, okay, so as Tim mentioned earlier, so, so you could, you can play games with them. Uh, you can... You can you do for uh, make frozen treats for them. Fill a Kong toy with treats, and I've heard many pet owners and many pet shop owners, for example, say fill a Kong and freeze it. And this can be very beneficial for your stimulus. Uh, teach them the tricks. This phrase is there is oh god, someone's coming over to say hello to everyone, Bruno. You gonna say hello? You gonna say hello? Now Bruno is saying to me right now, uh I'm, I consider myself a bit of a dog whisperer, but Bruno is saying to me right now he's hungry and where's my dinner? Isn't that right? Yeah. And there is look look at this. Like it's there's nothing better than doggy cuddles and doggy kisses, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Hmm? Yeah. Just throwing out my laptop. <coughs> okay, so there's different games you can play. And let me try and bring up a list of this. I had a list actually earlier on. And where is that image? I had an image actually. Let me see. You know, I think I'm the most disorganized person going, but I'm like, not really. Here we go. 
Okay, so the list I have here. So search game. So, okay, hide some treats and toys around the house and make it a scavenger hunt for your deck. Here's a very interesting one that, oh yeah, by the way, but that makes sure it's tiny, tiny amounts of food and like not too much. Don't overfeed them. There's a game called Shell Game. So place three plastic cups upside down on the floor and hide a treat underneath one of the cups. Let the dog know what tree, what cup you've hidden the tree under. And then move the cups around while your dog watches the movements. And see, can he find a cup with his reward? Now, I've tried that with Bruno and Millie. And they just knock over all the cups and take the treats anyway. I mentioned frozen, frozen treats. Uh, a fill a... A Kong, for example, with treats and freeze it. And once it once it melts, then let your dog just enjoy uh, waiting for the ice to melt and the surprise that's inside their form. So basic commands, obviously he knows the, um, the like your dog, he, she, will uh, know the basic commands or should know, like sit, stay. But now's the time to actually do some reward-based training. Try it with clicker training. Uh, I've used a clicker with Bruno, and he actually listens to us. I just need to find where the clicker is. I think he hid it on me. And give the to- give the dog's toys names, and train him. This is something I saw done with a colleague before. Train him to actually fetch certain toys by their names. This is actually there was a colleague in I, somewhere in Europe. That knew the names of over 200 toys. Now, Collies are very intelligent dogs. Bruno, um, maybe, kind of. Okay. And train a dog to pull away his toys. Into a box. That's another one. So these are some, like, interesting things you can do with your dogs. I'm sure that people have other ideas too. And if you have any other ideas, be, be sure to let us know. And do be sure that you um, comment underneath the actual live stream on Facebook and any ideas that you have. Be sure to share this around. Everyone hopefully will like to see this. And, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, I suppose with the most important thing to take away from this. So I'm going to start wrapping up here. The important thing to take away from this today. Right, for a start, dogs and cats, animals, cannot spread coronavirus. This has been already shown and has been said by the World Health Organization, by the CDC in America, and many other health organizations around the world. They all say the same things. Your pets cannot carry or spread coronavirus. So, all the fake news going around on social media regarding that your pets can actually spread this well look lads they can't they your your pets can spread coronavirus make sure that you i won't say use your dog but engage with your dog in this time your dogs need you as much as you need them and well, vice versa, because you do need your dogs. They are dogs. Dogs are fantastic for mental health. And I do think that in my own experience and in the experience of so many others I've talked to, uh, from the experience of those who joined me during our mental health episode back in October, uh, you'd be sure to check that out. It's up on our website. Dogs have a wonderful effect on your mental health. Uh, if you're looking at getting a dog specifically for this time, as Tim said, just think very carefully that, about that because when the lockdown is over and you go back to work, just think what will you do with that dog or that cat? Just think what will you do with that pet? So just remember that if you are getting a dog, it's you have to be looking at the long haul, not just temporary. Obviously find fun things to do with dogs as well well 
I think I'm going to wrap it up with that. And thanks to everyone who joined. Thanks to everyone who listened in. Uh, listening to our website. Remember our website is uh, thebigbark.ie. You can listen to all of our previous uh, podcasts on that. Our Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash Bark and Mad Ireland. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com forward slash Bark and Mad on the stroke IE. Our handle on Twitter is Bark and Mad on the stroke IE as well. We're on all those. I think we're on YouTube, but I haven't a clue what the actual URL is or anything. I think it could be on the phone or Millie's email address. They have an email address. If you want to email me with feedback, email Dara at the Big Bark IE. I always have to think of that one because I've changed my email just so many times. And I would like to just say a huge, huge thank you once again to Dr. Tim Corby from Pep on Dahai. Tim has been a huge supporter of our show since we started. And I am completely 100% grateful for all the support that Pep on have given us. And I do hope to reciprocate that and continue to support Pep on as well. So, let's wrap it up on that. Last thing I would say is, adhere to the social distancing guidelines. Listen to the advice that the government is giving you, that the HSC is giving you, that the World Health Organization is giving you. Just listen to our voice. And I think respect humanity in this, in this time, because I think now that we've all been thrown so far apart with the likes of social distancing and like, you can't really see your friends or anything now but it does seem to be bringing people closer together and now the fact that it's been renamed physical distancing you have to be physically distant but socially let's all try and come together I'm Dara Burke. This has been The Big Back. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope to have you again soon. And folks, mind yourselves. And look after each other. Thank you.